Hello gamers, welcome back or in case you are new here, I'm NKZL and in this video we are going to set some facts straight about Smite 1 and Smite 2 and the drama surrounding this topic. Before we get into the video's topic, let's set the stage. Smite is a third person action MOBA that focuses on teamwork and skilled gameplay. A few days ago, the developers behind Smite have announced that they are working on Smite 2, and in spring of 2024, they want to begin public alpha testing. This will be an entirely new game. As Smite is a live service game with cosmetic microtransactions, this announcement raised quite a few questions. But the main problem that created some drama is that Smite has over a 1600 skins and the vast majority of them will not be ported over to Smite 2, which upset some loyal fans. This subject reached quite a few content creators outside of the Smite ecosystem, from small content creators to big names like Asmon Gold. A lot of these content creators voiced their thoughts on this subject. However, I believe as a content creator, they have the responsibility to inform themselves on the subject before commenting on it. I believe anyone in this space has the responsibility to themselves and their viewers, especially when this is a job for them and have a sizable following. You are free to disagree, but this is my belief. I also understand that for someone that doesn't play Smite, this will be just a passing topic, so they might not want to dedicate the time to inform themselves. So here I am, ready to talk about some facts that should be known when looking at this topic. Let's start with the easy ones. Smite has been online for 10 years if you count the release date, and 11 years if you start counting from the open beta. The next point that I have seen misconstrued is the popularity of Smite. This can be a debatable topic, especially when compared to other popular MOBAs, Dota 2 and League of Legends. While I believe Smite is a much better game, I also believe it is not as popular as those two. But we only have real numbers for Dota 2, so we cannot say for sure, hence why people argue about this topic. However, what we can say for sure is that the numbers on Steam are not representative of the actual population. Smite is available on Steam, Epic Games, Xbox, PlayStation and even on the Nintendo Switch. All of these platforms have cross-play and cross-save enabled. From what information is available and suggested online, the vast majority of players are console players, which makes it even harder to accurately determine the population of Smite. What we can say for certain is that this is a very popular MOBA and we should leave it at that. Another thing that people seem to be confused about is if this is some kind of transition, like in the case of Overwatch. It is not. Smite will be kept online and updated in parallel with Smite 2. The developers themselves said that they have no plans to shut down Smite 1 and they organize themselves and build systems to develop content for both games. For example, after this announcement, the vast majority of skins will be created in parallel for Smite 1 and respectively Smite 2. If one of these skins is purchased in Smite 1, it will also be unlocked in Smite 2 when the character is released. It's important to note that these skins in Smite 1 will be subjected to the Unreal Engine 3 limitations and will be inferior to the skins in Unreal Engine 5. There will also be some gameplay differences between Smite 1 and Smite 2, so it is uncertain how they will proceed when it comes to the other elements but they are still committed to updating both games and that is all that really matters for those that will prefer to continue playing Smite 1. Considering the return and success of some of the classic versions, the likes of Classic WoW or Old School RuneScape, it is reasonable to say that there will be those that will stick with Smite 1 and for as long as there is interest in Smite 1, they will continue to update it. Some people expected Smite 2 to be a simple update to the original Smite, which is not technically possible, since Unreal Engine 3, which functions on all spaghetti code, is not compatible with Unreal Engine 5. The only way to transfer all the skins over would be by building everything from the ground up, exactly what they are doing for the rest of the game. Since not everyone has a technical background, I shouldn't bore you with the technical details on the differences between Unreal Engine 3 and 5. And realistically, you don't need technical knowledge to understand how ridiculous this ask is. All you need is a functioning frontal lobe. 
Basically, what some people are saying is what the developers released in the last 11 years of the game should be rebuilt from the ground up and re-released in one or two years at extreme costs for the developer and no extra cost for the players. This would require them to scale their development pipeline by at least 10 times, which comes with two massive challenges. First would be the exponential increase in costs, and let's be absurd and say that they would be willing to spend hundreds of millions on this. Even then, they would still have the second challenge of scaling up the studio. Programming is a complex field, and gaming is as complex as it gets in this field. Scaling a studio by 10 times would be an absolutely monumental task that would involve so much more than just hiring 10 times the staff, which of course would be a challenge in itself, since it's not easy to find the right fit for the job. If everyone was a perfect fit for the job, we would never have bugs in any game, and we all know that is simply not true. In a refusal to understand this simple logic, some people brought a few examples from the industry, so let's take a look at that argument and see why it falls apart. The most notable examples are Overwatch 2, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Path of Exiles 2. All the updates for these games have one thing in common. They all run on the same engine. And when we take a look at Overwatch 2 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, they are very simple updates. They have been dubbed by the communities of these games as DLCs, and they have not been considered new games, despite their developers trying to sell the idea of these being entirely new games. Overwatch 2 even failed to deliver on the vast majority of promises they made, which resulted in the inevitable downfall of the game. However, unlike those two examples, updates like this have been already implemented in Smite countless of times over the years, all free of charge. I'm sure there are some other cases where skins have been ported over in games, but I am fairly certain that in the vast majority of cases, if you look at these updates, you will notice that they either are a DLC type update and they run the same engine, or they are backwards compatible engines, like an update from Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 5. There will most definitely not be a multi-generational leap like a leap from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 5. The good news is that moving forward in the gaming industry, it seems that most engines are built to be backwards compatible. This hopefully will mean that most future releases will take into account your previous purchase content. However, I would never expect companies like Blizzard Activision or EA to be considerate especially when this will result in a loss of revenue. Another element that will majorly help in the following years is the progress of AI in the development field. Developers will be able to automate a lot of work required using AI. And for us as gamers, this will mean that developers will be able to provide a much better experience with fewer resources. But we are not there yet and the situations of today have to be considered using the standards and technologies available right now. Right now, Smite developers are not only doing a good job overall, but they are doing better than the standard in the industry. The standard in the industry is for nothing to carry over between entirely different games. Look at franchises like FIFA or Call of Duty. Almost every year, they release a new game and nothing carries over, and they make billions because of it. Which brings us to something else that needs to be said. Spending on entertainment is a money sink, not an investment. Especially when it comes to microtransactions. I am someone that spends thousands, even tens of thousands on cosmetics and in general on entertainment. But what I understand, and I think everyone else needs to understand, is that the moment you spend the money is the same as having dinner at a restaurant or going to see a movie at the cinema. You are exchanging your money for limited entertainment. And I think most importantly, only spend on entertainment when you have access and when you are alright with the money being wasted. So think twice or even 10 times before you spend on anything. Develop a mindset that will never allow you to feel disappointed in your purchases. Now that you have all this information, hopefully you will be capable of understanding the situation and drawing more accurate conclusions. But we have to say a few things about Smite because this situation does not exist in a void. 
Smythe has been consistently providing a better experience when compared to the competition. They have for over 11 years provided an enjoyable game and they will continue to do so. They are the development team that pushed Unreal Engine 3 to its very limit. And now, when there is simply nowhere else to push, they have chosen to update to a new game engine in the hopes of providing a better experience for their players. They could have just continued to milk Smite in its current format until it eventually died, and just develop a similar but different game in Unreal Engine 5, which would have cost them roughly the same amount of resources. It's true that they would have to build a community for that game from scratch, but they would be still milking the Smite community while doing so, and that would have been 100% the better business choice. However, they have chosen to offer bonuses and rewards in an entirely different game for their fans, both discounted prices and skins. From where I'm standing, their actions should be praised and appreciated because they are simply doing better than other companies have done and will do in this situation. Now, personally speaking, since they opened the can of worms that is carrying over some skins to the new game, I believe they should carry over the tier 5 skins. These tier 5 skins are uniquely designed and carry a lot of sentimental value for the players of Smite 1. I understand they would take considerable effort to move to Smite 2, but it would be extremely nice if they put that effort in and rewarded their longtime fans. That being said, the last thing that needs to be talked about is the way some people in the community approach this topic. Approaching it in a toxic way and refusing to at least try to understand what you are talking about only leads to one outcome, and that is the developer-player communication breaking down. This outcome might slightly hurt the developers, as nobody wants to be on the receiving end of insult, but more importantly, it hurts us as players a lot more. The ability to communicate with developers and explain in a thoughtful way why we want certain things is something that we should seek, and it is something that will benefit us more than it benefits the developers. A common misconception in gaming is that developers need your active feedback. They don't. The most important feedback is obtained through metadata and case studies. We, as players, are the ones that need active feedback to be understood and positively received by the developers. That is why I strongly believe toxic YouTube channels that aim to tear down the communication between gamers and developers are some of the most damaging things you can see on YouTube when it comes to gaming content. Of course, these channels always portray themselves as some kind of virtue signaling channels or saviors, but these people are in general just or even more predatory than the companies they critique, having mobile game ads and many other ways that only aim to milk their communities, just like the soulless corporations do. These people just echo whatever gives them the most clicks, and I believe they are despicable. But it is the world we live in, companies and creators without any morals or backbone. Please don't misunderstand me. Offering feedback and critique is important, but having a balanced and realistic view, sadly, does not drive clicks as much as drama and toxic behavior does. And at the end of the day, that is the only reason why soulless creators enforce such behaviors. Anyway, that is all for this video. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe and all that jazz. See you in the next one gamers.